Hi everyone, today's lecture is on imperialism in China. Please make sure you have your Cornell notes out. There will be some important vocab we'll be going over and there will also be an extra credit opportunity at the end of the video. So I've placed vocabulary slides at both the front and end of the lecture today. If you are someone that likes to know some key terms going in to the lecture, I'd suggest maybe pausing the video now, reviewing them, or just taking a quick look at them now. But I've also placed the vocab slide at the end in case you would like to review key, key terms and important events at the end. So today we're talking about imperialism in China, and we'll be talking about three events in the lecture, and we'll be delving a little bit deeper in class. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about are the Opium Wars. In the early 1800s, the British Treasury was being depleted due to its dependence upon imported tea from China. The Chinese still considered their nation to be the Middle Kingdom and therefore viewed the goods the Europeans brought to trade with as almost worthless items. To solve this trade imbalance, Britain imported opium, which is processed from poppy plants grown in the crown colony of India into China. Chinese officials attempted to ban the importation of the highly addictive opium, but ultimately failed. The British declared war on China in a series of conflicts called the Opium Wars. Superior British military technology allowed them to claim victory and subject the Chinese to a series of unequal treaties. According to the 1842 Treaty of Nanjing, the Chinese were to 1. Reimburse Britain for costs incurred fighting the Chinese. 2. Open several ports to British trade. 3. Provide Britain with complete control of Hong Kong. And 4. Grant extraterritoriality to British citizens living in China. We started taking a look at spheres of influence when we were discussing the scramble for Africa. Um, this is also a concept that we'll be looking at in China. So eventually, several European nations followed suit and they forced China to sign a series of unequal treaties. Extraterritoriality ga guaranteed that European citizens in China were only subject to the laws of their own nation and could only be tried by their own courts. Eventually, Western nations, meaning European nations, areas to the west of China, um, established spheres of influence within China, which guaranteed specific trading rights and privileges to each nation within its respective sphere. And if you take a look at the map on the left for a second, you can see what European countries and regions of China had those spheres of influence. Eventually, the United States demanded equal trading status within China, and rather than carve out its own sphere of influence, kind of adding a color to that map that we just saw, they simply announced the open door policy in 1899. This stated that all nations should have equal trading rights regardless of the spheres of influence. While this may have prevented the further expansion of spheres of influence, it did little to restore Chinese sovereignty. So remember, imperialism, we've got these much stronger nations coming into a country, a much weaker country, exploiting them for various goods, um, for markets to resell items, and this is what's happening as well in China. So the Chinese were very upset, and there's a couple different things that we see them do, and again, this is just kind of an overview, and we'll get deeper into this in class. Um, but disgusted with the failed efforts of the Manchu dynasty in ridding China of opium or foreign influence after the Opium Wars, the Chinese citizens staged the Taiping Rebellion between 1850 and 1864. 
already weakened, the Chinese officials turned to foreigners for help in putting down the rebellion, killing millions of Chinese in the process. After the further insults of the open door policy, Chinese nationalists staged the Boxer Rebellion in 1900. Viewed as a threat to the profits they enjoyed in their imperialist spheres of influence, foreign nations formed an international coalition that ended the uprising. With this victory, additional concessions were granted to foreign nations within China. And at this point, I'm just going to strongly suggest um, that if you'd like some real extra credit, which will be the equivalent of one homework grade, you should click on the link below, which is the Crash Course World History video on imperialism. And you should take notes on it if you would like to receive this extra credit. So if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about this topic, if you feel like you've been a little bit confused, or if you are just looking to boost your grade up, um, click the link below and go ahead and watch the video. Like I said also, this is the vocab um, that's really important and essential to this topic. So at this point, I'm going to stop and let you stay here if you'd like to copy some of these things down. And I hope you enjoyed this video.